We're following some breaking news. Senator Kirsten Sinema of Arizona says she is not running for re-election. In a video just posted to social media, the Arizona lawmaker said, quote, the only political victories that matter these days are symbolic. She also said that compromise has become a, quote, dirty word and that the U.S. has chosen anger and division. Let's get to CBS News congressional correspondent Scott McFarlane on this right now. Scott, um, there was there were signs that she might not run for re-election. She wasn't raising a lot of money, uh, and yet we didn't expect this to come today. What is likely to be behind her decision not to run again? Yeah, her lengthy statement, Nancy, calls politics a dirty thing right now, a blemished, imperfect type of politics that's frustrating to her. And you mentioned the, the money quote from her statement. She says compromise is a dirty word. There's also, though, an ugliness in the recent polling for her. Arizona's Senate seat, the seat she now holds, is up this year. Carrie Lake, the high-profile Trump supporter, likely to be the Republican nominee. Kirsten Sinema, now an independent, was being challenged from the left by the likely Democratic nominee, Congressman Ruben Gallego. This race, if it had three people, would be unpredictable, uncustomary, and potentially <laughs> untenable for Kirsten Sinema. This, this is very much a political challenge for her, trying to keep up with two other candidates. And as you mentioned earlier, she has been somebody who's criticized, if not protested, the current politics of the moment. And this now makes three U.S. senators who've been known as centrists, who've been bridge builders or compromise hawks, that have all announced their retirements, along with West Virginia's Joe Manchin and Utah's Mitt Romney. She released a video explaining her decision on uh, X, formerly known as Twitter. Let's take a listen to a bit of her explanation. I believe in my approach. But it's not what America wants right now. I love Arizona, and I am so proud of what we've delivered. Because I choose civility, understanding, listening, working together to get stuff done, I will leave the Senate at the end of this year. Scott, this is someone who has really charted an unusual course in Congress throughout the, uh, the course of, of her time there. She came in as a liberal. She had actually been in the Arizona Green Party. And then she started to move towards the middle in ways that sometimes really confounded the Democratic Party, frustrated the White House. Sometimes they felt like she was gratuit gratuitously taking stances against them. And uh, people were left to wonder why she was taking those stances, because she didn't often grant interviews to national reporters. Uh, what can you tell us about her position right now in the U.S. Senate? She has become an independent. And while she has been a thorn in the side of the White House from time to time, she is also very often in the middle of uh, the few bipartisan victories that this White House has been able to eke out in a very closely divided Congress. Yeah, no matter the toxicity of our politics, Nancy, in the U.S. Senate, if you're somebody who's in the middle, if you're known as a moderate or pragmatist, odds are you're on the winning side of every winning vote. And that's certainly been true for Senator Sinema. She has this rich political backstory where she was able to win a very purple, very tricky U.S. House seat, parlayed that into an incredibly narrow win in her U.S. Senate race in Arizona. But the pathway here in 2024 may have been invisible. Despite her track record in winning tough races, a three-way race where she's the independent, that's not just tricky. It's really unprecedented in this generation of Senate races. So for Kirsten Sinema, she's on the winning side of so many close things here, Nancy, but perhaps didn't see a pathway to be on the winning side in eight months. No kidding. The, the trickiness of that path for her first led her to leave the Democratic Party uh, because a matchup against Ruben Gallego in a primary was looking increasingly difficult, even in her home state of Arizona. But you're right, a three-way race is no picnic either. So what does uh, her decision to... Uh, to, to, um, to retire and, and not to seek re-election mean for the two-way race going forward in uh, what is yeah. a very purple state. Each of these announcements about retirements or campaigns in the U.S. Senate has this little jolt effect here because any one more swing could swing the balance of power, impacting anything from legislation on abortion rights, gun rights, to 
confirmation to federal judges and potentially in the next few years, confirmation of a Supreme Court justice. So everybody takes all of these announcements seriously. In a two-way race now without Senator Sinema, Carrie Lake, who has made a name for herself as an acolyte and a champion, uh, somebody who triumphs Donald Trump, and Ruben Gallego, who cuts a higher profile in Arizona, but not nationally, running for the Democratic nomination. A two-way race in that state in this cycle expected to be particularly close. But it also underscores something, Nancy. How much the margin for error has become invisible for Democrats in the U.S. Senate? They hold a 51-49 majority if you put all the independents in the bucket with Democrats. Joe Manchin is retiring, and there's not a Democrat in this city who thinks they can hold that seat in West Virginia, which would put it at 50-50 which means if President Biden wins re-election, they'd still have a chance at the majority. But any other complication, like potentially this one, or perhaps this makes things easier for Democrats, impacts that balance of power with so much riding on it. It's one of the reasons why we pay attention to more than just the White House race, but all these congressional races and the impacts they can have on Americans' lives. Scott McFarlane uh, breaking down this news that Kirsten Sinema will not be seeking re-election from the state of Arizona. Thank you.